In the last video, we successfully got this to where when we add in some kind of name for a budget and then add in an amount, then hit enter, you can see it's adding correctly. It's telling us it's been added, which is all great. However, there's a couple UX UI things we need to pay attention to. First of all, you can see here that it's not clearing the form. And then secondly, usually you'd be submitting to some kind of database, in which case you'd want this to go disabled and then probably show some other message like submitting or whatever. So those are kind of a couple things we can pay attention to. We're going to kind of do these in a couple different stages. To start with, though, we need to find some kind of way of tracking the state of this submitted form. And the nice thing is the React Router DOM gives us that. It gives us, with that, gives us that with something called Use Fetcher. Now, there actually is a way to use the standard form to kind of get some of this data, but Use Fetcher is really meant for something where you're not necessarily like moving different routes, like going to a different page. You're submitting something to that page, and then you want to basically figure out, hey, where are we at in this process? So you can see here, fetching data not associated with UI routes, like I just mentioned, submitting data to action without navigating, again, what I mentioned a moment ago, handling multiple ones at the same time. So by default, if you're using the form, you can only submit one thing at a time, but sometimes you might have somebody click multiple times really quickly on a couple of things, and you want to be able to handle that. So use fetcher would be the thing you're reaching for. So all we're going to do is switch out this form for a fetcher. If I come down here, you can see that I just need to grab this hook of use fetcher. So use fetcher like this. And if I start to type, you see it comes in up top there. Perfect. Let's call this fetcher since that's what they're calling it. Fetcher like this from use fetcher. Now all I have to do is come in here to the form and say fetcher.form. And then down here, make sure that that has updated as well. This needs to be fetcher.form. Okay. So those are both set. So everything should work the exact same. If I come back over here, I add something. Let me make sure I can see this. Pull this up. So I've got four right now and an amount. Hit enter. Okay, so everything is still working just fine. You might say, well, what's the advantage of doing this then? Well, one of the advantages is we get access to several things from this fetcher. And one of those would be the state of the fetcher. So let's just say like is submitting, and this will be the state I'm looking for. So fetcher dot, and one of the things I have access to is the state. And you can see this pop-up tells me it'll either be idle, loading, or submitting. And I just want this to be a Boolean to say, is it submitting? This state right here will basically tell me how my UI should update. So we're going to do a couple of different things. First of all, we want to clear this form. And rather than clearing each individual item, let's just clear the entire form. So I need to grab access to that with a hook that comes with React called use ref. So let's just say form ref equals use ref. If I start to type this, there we go from React. And let me just pull this up top here. So let's go all the way to the top. And we'll call this React Router DOM imports. And then this will just be React Imports. You don't have to necessarily title all these. I'm just doing it so that it's easy to follow exactly what I'm doing. All right, so now this form ref, I want to point to my actual form right here. So I can simply type ref equals, and this would be form ref. Now I want to actually clear this form immediately upon submission. So for that, we're going to use another hook that comes with React called a use effect. And if you're fuzzy in any of these, Sean's done a lot of great tutorials on React, and so that's where I'd suggest you look. Uh, he's actually who kind of spurred me to finally learn React myself. We're going to start, first of all, with if it's not submitting. So if it's done submitting, then I want to do a couple things. I want to form ref dot current, and I want to reset it. And this use effect hook needs to take in an array of dependencies. So when should it run? It'll run, first of all, upon mounting, and then anytime is submitting changes. So when it changes, it'll run and say, oh, it is it is submitting, so it won't do anything. When it stops submitting, it'll change to something else. So it'll change back to false, and then it will run again, and that's when it should reset this. So if I come back over here, let's open up the terminal just so I can see that application storage, make sure that it's actually doing something. We've got five on there right now. I add something here, here, hit submit, and now it clears. However, look, it's still focused on this amount. And really what I'd like it to do is to refocus back up here. So let's add one more ref. Uh, how about right here? So we'll say const, and we'll just say like uh, focus ref. How about that? For use ref, and this focus ref right here, I want to attach to this input. So we'll say ref equals focus ref. And now what I want to do is after I've reset it, I then want to grab the focus ref dot current dot focus. So I'm telling JavaScript, hey, focus on that input. So if I come back here, I add something in, hit enter. Now it clears it, and it refocuses it up here. Cool. Now, there's another part we talked about, and that is how do we show this as disabled? Well, we've already got this state right here is submitting. Why don't we just use that on the button down below? I can pass in disabled, 
and just say, if is submitting is true, then go ahead and show this as disabled. So once more, I come in here, add this, add this is going to be real quick. You ready for this? Okay, you can't even see it. All right, that's how quick it is. We're going to have to do some stuff to change that. Because we're going to local storage, there's no time. It doesn't wait for anything. So you're really never going to see this unless I show you it uh, by kind of manually delaying it. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm just going to my helpers file over here, and I'm going to add one more function. So this will be like color or whatever. Um, this one up top here will just be a little kind of pretend function to slow stuff down. So we'll say export const. We'll say wait. I think this is from West Boss. He always did this. Um, and then what, what I'm going to do is new promise. And I want to resolve this after a certain time. So set timeout. We'll resolve after math.random. And then we'll just say something like times 800. So each time from anywhere from zero milliseconds to 800 milliseconds, it will pass back a promise, but we'll have that little time to wait essentially like on a fake database. Now I need to actually write this uh, function correctly. All right, there we go. So now we've got this wait. Let's go ahead and go back to our dashboard file. And what I wanna do is on the action itself, I'm just gonna wait for a second before I do anything else. So this is already an async function. Now I can just await and I'm gonna await my wait function right here that I'll pull in. All right, so let's just double check. Yeah, there it is, so it pulls in. So now it should randomly wait a certain amount of time and maybe just to make it real obvious, let's change this to something like 2000, not 20,000, all right, 2000. So now if I come in here and add this, it should be disabled and you can see it gets disabled and then after a certain amount of time, it will then show it. So in addition to disabling this, we also wanna show a different text here for the button if it is submitting. So let me go back to my add budget form and right here is where we want to change around that text. And in fact, let's just leave it there and let's change all this because I'm not going to want an icon if it's submitting. So inside here, I'm going to say, after copying that, if it is submitting, then go ahead and show a span that just says something like uh, creating a budget. Otherwise, then go ahead and show my span and my current amount. Now, because this is JSX and I don't have a single parent element, I actually have to create this inside of a fragment so I can just do it like this and now it should be happy with this okay so I'll come back here we'll add this in now it says creating budget or I guess we could say like submitting submitting something like that let's do that instead so let's try one more time come in here add some stuff submitting and then eventually it's it's done all right so it's added that extra budget down below so great so we've got some UX UI things it's clearing the form it's reselecting this for us we're getting this nice disabled so we can't re-click the button. And in addition to that, we're giving the user some feedback.